this lab is lab 11, which is on the ballistic pendulum. And most of the physics in this lab, we've already covered. Some of it, we haven't covered. And what we'll do here is that ultimately, the goal of the lab is to measure the speed of a steel ball shot from a launcher. In previous labs, we did it with a plastic ball, but now we just want to measure it. And so what you're going to see here is that we're going to use two methods. The first one is just we're going to use the, the launcher by itself with a photo gate timer. And that time, that speed, we're going to call that V1. And the whole goal is to get V1 experiment plus or minus sigma 1. And then the Second one is that we're going to use the launcher with a pendulum catcher. And in this guy here, we're going to call that V2 experiment with its own confidence interval. And the whole goal here is that we want to compare both distribution curves. If they overlap, then they measure the same speed. If they don't overlap, they measure different speeds. So let's focus on part one. In part one, we're going to measure speed V1 experiment using a photo gate timer. So how do we do this? So we've done this before. So as you may remember, when we talk about a photo gate timer, We have a laser beam. So this laser beam is being shot, and this is the laser beam. And then we're going to shoot a ball through the laser. So as we shoot this steel ball here, it interrupts the beam by the diameter of the ball. So we assume that during this period here, that the ball does not lose that much that much speed here, but this is when it, so remember, this is when it, uh, what does it do? It blocks the beam. So when it blocks the beam, it turns it on, and when it unblocks, it turns it off. And so the way we measured speed before here, and in this case, we're calling this the speed of the ball, it's going to be the diameter of the ball, which we know is one inch, and then we're measuring this time. So this is how we're going to get speed one. So what do I want to do here? Set up an Excel table.
or a spreadsheet table, it doesn't really matter. And when you set it up, you're gonna make 10 measurements And from here, you're going to measure the time, and then you're going to transfer the time to a speed. And remember, you got to show me that first calculation. And so then what we're going to be doing here is that when we get our 10 measurements, we're going to get an average. We're going to get a standard deviation, and we're going to get V1 minus sigma 1, V1 plus sigma 1. So now I have my confidence interval. And now I'm ready to plot. So now plot a distribution curve and do the counting. In other words, you're going to get a curve and you're going to set up a confidence interval. And so when you set up this confidence interval, and here it is. And what we know about this confidence interval here is that we call this a one sigma confidence interval. So what does that mean when we have a one sigma? It says that on average, one sigma means 68%. In our case, we're gonna go to 70% because we're only taking 10 shots. So 70% of the measurements, which measurements? Here are our 10 measurements. So we have our 10 measurements right here. And these 10 measurements, they should fall within a confidence interval such way that on average, I'm gonna get seven that land within and three without. So what do I want you to do? count the number of points that land between V1 experiment plus or minus sigma 1. 